This is Dr. Selena Phillips, and this is the last video in a series on nutrient requirements for livestock. In this video, we're going to be discussing growth and its understanding growth and how it impacts nutrient requirements. The first thing we need to define is how do we assess growth? How is growth measured? Um, how are we defining growth? And there are several different ways we can define growth. The first is simply an increase in body weight. Is the animal getting heavier? We can talk about an increase in frame size or stature of the animal. We can talk about growth relative to changes in composition, such as fat to muscle to bone ratios. Most commonly, we talk about measuring growth through the growth rate. How many pounds per day are animals gaining? When we're looking at growth, it's important to understand a standard growth curve for most livestock. And on this slide, you'll notice I've got several sections marked. Day zero is going to represent conception. And then we're talking about months of age here. And this is just kind of a standardized, I think I've developed this. Uh, it's for cattle. And so we're just kind of talking about it. But, When it comes to understanding growth in livestock, it's important to understand a growth curve. And so what we have is age in, uh, across the uh, bottom axis, live weight, gain, uh, live weight in kilograms on the side axis. If we consider zero to be conception, and then we're going to start with conception here, move out to birth where we see that last little bit of fetal growth right before birth. We're going to see, and these, and these are for cattle going into, uh, and this is years across the bottom, as they cross a year of age and hit puberty, then they're going to hit maturity as well. Most animals grow, grow in this manner. You'll see um, a rapid change right here, and this is where they're rapidly growing mm. and developing bone and muscle and their, their structure and frame, essentially, to where they shift into starting to lay down more fat, not, not growing as rapidly as they approach maturity. During this early phase of growth before puberty, they're mostly gaining water, protein, and ash, meaning the minerals like calcium and phosphorus for bone development. When we think about what they're actually gaining during this time, that's kind of what we gotta make sure they, their needs are met for protein and certain minerals, as well as the calories to be able to do that. As we move from puberty to maturity, the gain is mostly going to, is shifting from protein to fat. Oops, sorry. Is shifting from protein to an increase in fat production. And so we're going to need to change. We can drop protein requirements, which is expensive. We can reduce some calcium and phosphorus because their frame is developed out and we can shift what we're feeding during that time to better support uh, the actual phase that the animal's in. When we look at growth requirements, we need to understand that maintenance requirement does have an effect. All animals have this maintenance requirement. We've covered that in earlier videos. And know that the maintenance requirements are always going to be more than growth itself. So they require more calories just to maintain themselves than they do to growth. It's going to be, um, and so when we're trying to feed them, we need to understand that maintenance is still going to be a large chunk of it. Can we get efficient with it? Body weight, when we're looking at growth requirements, is going to be looking at the current body weight or their expected mature weight. We can look at requirements either way. Like, what is the expected mature weight of this animal? We can also look at the gain of new tissue. Um, rate of protein deposition or fat deposition. Those are some ways that we can look at for growth requirements that you'll see in some species. When we take a look and understand growth rate, we need to know about the, comp the influence of the composition of gain, meaning there's different ratios of bone to muscle to fat throughout that growth curve. 
And so those compositional changes are what, what's going to direct our requirements. A great example is in the feedlot industry. Feedlot industries use step-up ration or stage rations to account for these differences in composition of gain. They're going to feed them appropriately for what stage in the growth curve they are and try to match it as best they can to be most efficient with, with getting that, the best out of that animal for growth without sacrificing health and well-being. In general, as you look at nutrient requirements, especially on a concentration basis for growing animals, they're going to be higher than compared to mature animals. Essentially, the daily requirements the same, how much protein they need to eat, but because young animals have a smaller GI tract, they're not able to consume as much feed as mature animals, they need a much more nutrient-dense diet. So they need higher concentrations of nutrients in their diet to be able to meet the same goal. Energy is still our biggest influence on growth rate. If we have too, much, too many calories, we're going to push into that fat deposition earlier than we want to. If we don't have enough calories, we're going to slow down that growth curve and that animal's not going to gain and potentially could eventually develop, be susceptible to health challenges if they're not gaining and getting the nutrients that they need. Essential and the limiting amino acids are important for both non-ruminants and the young ruminants. Once microbial fermentation develops in a ruminant animals, that becomes a little less important. But we need to make sure that when they're in that early development, or for non-ruminants like pigs and poultry and equine, the amino acids are very important to make sure we're matching the amino acids to what those animals need them for, and so we're as efficient as possible with our protein as well. Additionally, we need to make sure that vitamin and mineral needs are met during this time, particularly those associated with bone development and muscle contraction and relaxation due to the rapid growth rates of bone and muscle, especially early in that growth curve. When we, you've heard me mention before in videos this concept of optimum growth rate or optimum production and that can be a variety of things when we're dealing with growth we need to understand their purpose so if our first goal is to like I'll, i take into account the sheep unit where i oversee um, that unit we want to develop our replacement ewe lambs so that they're productive over a, a, a lifetime we don't want them to be the highest rate of growth forcing their development. That's not desirable for lifetime production. But we also don't want to create this uneven growth cycle where we push them really hard, we slow them down, push them. That's not as desirable. For the most part, moderate steady growth rates are best, but they can vary from species to species. In the cattle industries, beef and dairy, they will uh, raise their heifers and develop those heifers at a very steady growth rate so that they can perform the best over a lifetime. If our goal is to produce meat, then we have a criteria that's established by our customer and the consumer criteria for a high quality, consistent meat product, no matter what species we're looking at. And while genetics is a large influence on carcass quality, nutritional management is extremely important. And that's why, uh, like the feedlot industry, uses those step-up rations that try to match that growth curve so that we can really try to be as efficient with our calories, with our protein sources, and financially efficient as we're trying to make sure that those animals' needs are matching that sigmoid growth curve. That wraps up this uh, video series on nutrient requirements for livestock. We've talked about what requirements are and what they're not. We've talked about factors affecting requirements, how they're determined, and we've covered the various stages of productions and how they impact nutrient requirements. Thank you.